Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from Circe's Q. I don't know, I'm just guessing with your name there, man. He says the AK-12 Cobra RDS with a laser sight heavy barrel angled grip. Also, we're playing the Russian gamer, by the way, with an MP443 for the sidearm with a laser sight and suppressor. Grenade will be the RGO Impact, which is actually a Russian grenade, I didn't know that. And then the knife will be the machete. Spec upgrade is defensive. Only the finest, most overpowered spec upgrade for glorious Russia, comrade. You're a Russian man stuck on a US server, and you must find a way to overthrow those Americans and their capitalist idea. Use only the finest Russian machinery, handmade by the North Korean prisoner inmates from Serbia. Be of best use to Vladimir Putin and shoot out every person, whether they are from America, Canada, Mexico. Extra punishment for the evil region hopper Japanese, Europeans, and South Americans. Make the Kremlin proud, comrade. All right, that's a little bit brutal, but uh, for some reason, oh, about 500 people have voted that comment, so I guess we're going with it. And I threw a little bit of jungle camo here on this AK just so we can uh, blend into the new Operation Outbreak map. Not all the gameplay will be here, but uh, I do play it whenever possible because I really do like this new map. It just looks badass. They need to lower that ticket count though, because once you take down the jungle, it's just not that much fun to play on. Now, I'm not really sure what the whole thing is with uh, people giving Russian gamers shit. I'm sure there's lots of good, decent Russian gamers out there. I think in the Counter-Strike community, though, they have uh, developed a certain notoriety for specific ways of playing or something like that. I don't really know. I think pretty much every nation has their group of really stupid or uh, embarrassing gamers online. I know the US certainly does. But gamer tropes aside, let's take a look at this loadout now. I have a huge amount of respect for the AK platform. I think it's a badass gun in real life and I'm glad that the gun is at least decent in Battlefield. It's not going to go up against the HK416 or anything like that or the M416. But uh, it's definitely a good weapon at range. The heavy barrel and angle grip is definitely a usable way to use the gun. I don't know if it needs it. It doesn't really improve its ranged effectiveness too much, but uh, it's good on wider open maps where you can put some range between you and your opponent because you're not going to get any major benefits in close quarters just because of your rate of fire. Now, if you put the weapon in a burst fire mode, you can get a faster rate of fire burst, but then you have to use the weapon in burst fire mode. And I just don't like burst fire guns in this game. I don't think they're balanced properly. I think the whole philosophy behind them doesn't really make sense. Generally speaking, you would want to be able to take down your opponent with one burst of fire, not have to do a follow-up. But since that's not really plausible in this game, you have to do multiple bursts, and then the whole concept behind burst fire doesn't really work out so well. Now, keep your eyes peeled for the way that Battlefront does burst fire because I have a feeling that it's actually going to be far more usable in Battlefront than it ever was in BF4. Then again they have laser weapons or blaster rifles and they can kind of give them whatever properties that they want where Battlefield's kind of bound to the real world standards of 30 round magazines and rates of fire and all that sort of stuff. Now the AK-12 actually shoots a different round than the AK-47. It's very very similar to the 5.56 in the style that it's designed where the AK-47 has a much wider bullet itself and it. it's not as good as penetrating armor as the AK-12 round is. So um, it's kind of interesting and it, it does give you a bit of variation when you go with some of the older school AK weapons. And I would still love to see an AK-47 in this game because you could balance it differently because it does shoot that different heavier round. Now I'm still really enjoying the Cobra sight. I think I'm kind of starting to favor it more over the Coyote sight. I've gone back and forth a bunch of times throughout the course of Battlefield 4 preferring the Cobra sight preferring the coyote sight. I still think I like the Cobra sight. Just because of that three-prong aimer, it allows me to focus a little bit better, especially when combat's getting a little crazy and there's a lot of dust and explosions. It just allows me to find that crosshair ever so slightly easier. It also doesn't really obstruct my target, which is what you can do with the actual dot from the Coyote sight. I mean, these are minute complaints, minute differences. I just still think I prefer the Cobra. It also looks kind of cooler because it's actually a real sight where the Coyote sight is uh, something that you would probably never ever see in combat. Now here's the deal with the AK-12 when it comes to its actual performance. It's a low rate of fire, 650 rounds per minute. If you burst fire it, it does 750 rounds per minute, which is 
not that great, pretty much equal with a M416 or something like that. So very little reason to actually use a burst fire AK-12 when you use it on semi-automatic. It's pretty accurate. The recoil is very, very minimal. So you should have no problem zeroing in on targets at range. But then again, there's a lot of other really good weapons out there that can do this. I think it would probably be a pretty usable weapon on the console platform, um, especially if you're not good at mitigating recoil and stuff like that. So on PC, uh, I find very little reason to use this weapon, but on console, I imagine I would probably like it. I end up liking the slower firing weapons on console a lot more because uh, they don't kick as hard and I don't have to sort of burst fire them or tap fire them as much. I can kind of go full auto on my targets. Now, where does the AK-12 actually stand in the real world military scenario? Well, it's a very modern AK platform and uh, Russia is looking at it to replace their standard rifle. First, it seemed like they were passing it over and not considering it, but then it's passed all the tests that they wanted it to. So it's actually competing right now with sort of a modernized version of the AEK-971 and the AK-12. So uh, Russia, I guess, is looking at both of those weapons to become its next standard assault rifle, which is kind of cool. Now, if you haven't seen the Team Deathmatch version of Operation Outbreak, here it is. It's a mediocre map at best. I'm not crazy about it just because it has tons of angles. The spawns are a little bit chaotic and you'll be going on a flank and people will be spawning behind you and just shoot you in the back. It's kind of annoying and uh, it suffers from battlefield syndrome which is basically uh, just having too many flipping angles to the point where you can't move throughout a map tactically and hopefully one day the battlefield developers will realize their folly with their map design because uh, every single map in Battlefield 4 pretty much suffers from this problem. Now the RGO impact grenade is one of those things that I constantly wonder if I should be using that instead of the M67 frag. The M67 frag has the ability to kill your opponent with one grenade from full health down to zero health where the impact grenade can't do 100% damage to somebody but it's a great way to finish off your target and it's also kind of the undodgeable grenade. If somebody's behind a piece of cover and you throw that grenade grenade perfectly, it's going to detonate right next to them doing that maximum grenade damage and they won't see it coming. Honestly, I'm not a huge fan of that philosophy when it actually comes to game design because I like the idea of grenades that people can anticipate and try and dodge. And if you want it to detonate right next to them, you, you used to in Battlefield 3 have to throw grenades at a very high angle so that you could actually time them to detonate right when they landed on the ground. It was like a whole skill set within itself, but now you can just use the RGO impact grenade and chuck grenades at people and they'll blow up and kill them pretty quickly. I, I just don't like impact grenades in video games, but uh, that's just my philosophy. I think it lowers or lessens the skill gap. But alas, they're here to stay, and I think DICE is at least compromised pretty well in balancing them out so that they're not crazy overpowered. They still are annoying when you get killed by them, but uh, they won't kill you in one shot, so it's a good way to finish up a kill, and it does work with this kit. Now, you might notice that I'm using a different weapon here. It's because I ran out of ammo with my AK-12 because nobody drops ammo in Team Deathmatch, and so sometimes you just gotta pick up another gun. And when you're running with something like the AK-12 for a while and then you switch over to the ACWR, it's like night and day. The killing power on the ACWR is just so much better for all of these team deathmatch situations. The AK-12 is literally only better in extreme long range and even then you can kind of just close the gap if you have a close range weapon. All in all though, good accuracy and good strategy will allow you to excel with the AK-12. Don't forget to leave your comments for next week's episode of Loadout. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.